Welcome to Tipcast by the Nina Guardian. Yes, hello and welcome to Tipcast with myself, Shane Stills and Shane Brophy, sports editor of the Nina Guardian and Owen Brislan, uh, Tumi Vara, a man on the far right of your screen, hopefully as you're looking at it. Um, there's loads to talk about. The league is starting this weekend, the trip away to Omoor Park and Leash. Paddy Maher obviously uh, announced his retirement due to a neck injury yesterday, and that's from, from playing entirely, so we won't even be seeing him in the blue jersey of Pernod Carthy going forward. I'll start off with yourself, uh, Shane. There's plenty more to discuss too. But first off, that news of uh, Paddy Maher came like a bolt from the blue. Oh, Jesus. Like, it's um, incredible, really. I guess so. just to see that email land yesterday morning to say that Paddy Maher is retired. And, like, there was, I suppose, I would have listened to Daylaw's podcast and the examiner and TJ Ryan mentioned something maybe was going to happen in tip. But, geez, you think of the older guy of Brigade, you think Paddy was the last one you think would go. And, now, and to think that not only is it from tip, it's from everything, like you say, and that, that must be, it must have been so hard for for Porik to accept that he can't even line out for for Torles again. Like you think, when your inter county days are are over, you can be soft, the blow can be softened by going back and hurling with your club and I keeping in with the game that way. And to think that medically he can't he can't play the game anymore it must be so tough. And like I, I'll put it out there, like I. Like I would have said that Nicky English and Owen Kelly were the two probably most iconic Tipperary hurlers of my lifetime. And I don't think their retirements have got the, the reaction that Porrick has got. And, I, and that probably puts him up there as one of the all-time greats. Like he, I, he, is, he probably is, he is definitely mine of that, this generation of, I just, I love seeing him play. Like, and I just, he was just brought it. He, had, he was everything you want in a Tipperary hurler. And, Look, it's just I, I hated to think that the time was going to come when Parig was not going to hurt for tip anymore, and it's just sad the way it, it's worked out for him. Yeah, what were you thinking on when you heard the news? I uh, couldn't believe it. It was uh, listen, it was going to come. It was going to like it was. It was okay. He was about thirty-two years of age. It was going to happen in the next couple of years. You were kind of saying, but I suppose what came with shock is that he was Mister Consistent all his career. Thirteen years playing, like I was going through numbers more. He's played 71 out of 77 league matches. He's played 60 consecutive championship games, 4,200 minutes of playing time. Um, he rare he came off as injured in 2020 against Limerick in the semi final. I think that was the first time he's ever substituted, apart from a blood sub here and there. Like this man is Iron Man, and like then for a career just out of the blue, then obviously it's out of the blue, for, it's out of the blue for us, but obviously it's a, it's a serious injury. And for that just to end it, and as Shane is saying there for him it must be very very difficult because um to stop and to just to have no club no anything like it just it's just it's just it's very very hard for him and uh, listen let's say his his big shoes to fill i don't know like these like we we came up in a generation here now in the last few years last number of years we're looking up to have like Paulie, brendan noel shamey canlan they all came together and like um these boys are very very hard to replace you know it's but um listen he was just he was just an incredible player. He was always coming up, coming forward of all. He was Mister Dependable. Even this year in the in the county semi final against Kildangan, Kildangan just had no 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 answer to him there. And in 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 he just ball after ball coming out, coming out, coming out. And it was he, you kind of you think of Paulie Mary, you think of the likes of you know the likes of uh, the Rock of Cork going back, coming out with the ball and driving it over the bar and that kind of stuff. That kind of inspirational player, like he lifts the team, lifts the crowd. He's you know, he's just he's going to be a massive loss and a really level headed guy, really nice fella, no airs and graces. Um young players like very like he's going to be a huge hole in the dressing room. He's gonna be a huge hole around the training around, around the training field, you know. So um listen, the very the very best looks in what in what whatever he um he goes whoever he, he does place that but super, super player. Yeah, Shane, I mean he he'll definitely go down as one of Tipperary's greatest ever players, no doubt about that. Like as Owen mentioned, there the Iron Man playing for ten years without, you know, ever not being started in championship. My first memory of him really standing out, and like obviously there was that minor final when he kept uh, Joe Canning very quiet, but announcing himself on the senior stage to me was the time he played centre back against Kilkenny in the league final in two thousand and nine, and Henry Shefflin got so frustrated mm -hmm. with him he ended up getting a, a yellow card, which was a sin bit at the time. So any particular mm -hmm. memories you'd have, Shane? 
Yeah, this is the one that keeps coming back to my head is that, uh, like, Liam Sheedy's done an awful lot right as um, to bring up along. I was trying to think, how, how did he not see Porik? I suppose uh, that 2006 campaign when he was minor manager, like, like it took him until the Munster final to for Pori to get in the team. Like they had a, a defensive issue at full back in the semi final against Limerick. I remember like Tip won that game handily, and but to concede the three goals and, and the full back was a problem. And then like Pori hadn't played in the first two games of that campaign, and then suddenly he's thrown in a deep end against Cork in a Munster final. Okay, they lost that game, but. I still remember, like, okay, this, 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 there's something in this guy. And then, as you say, that All Ireland final where Joe Canning was the big name. Like, he nearly, Joe Canning was nearly overshadowed maybe the senior match. It was like this guy was going for three in a row of minor All Irelands. He was to, he was the, the new kid on the block at nationally. He was probably, he could have played for Galway that year if he, if, if he, if he, if he wanted to. And that party just snuffed him out in that game. It was, is incredible and then you go on to senior level you said that match against um that match against Kilkenny where he for he more for more or less frustrated Henry Shefflin into getting a, a yellow card and if people remember back then the yellow card meant you were sent from the field and you could be replaced it was one of those trials like it just like he, the bigger the game the the bigger the occasion the better he was and like just just incredible moments like and he always he was just so dependable like and look he, Every player had his difficult games, and like he had it with Way well, Isaac, you Alpine, and Johnny Glynn. Like he, the big tall forward was probably his kryptonite. I would have said in, in his career, but like that was very, very few times he was he was um, under pressure. And look, I still, I suppose the, 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 the I think the pleasurable thing about it is that now he. We're not going to see like when you say a player like him, or you get to a certain age where you can see visible decline. I suppose the fact that he's been forced to quit now, we won't get to see that. Like he was, he was as good in his last game for Tipperary against Waterford last year. He like he would he wasn't the reason Tip lost to Waterford. He was so good that uh, he was so good for Torla Sarsfields right up to the end. And I suppose that's probably that's a pleasurable thing for me is that while as disappointing as we want to get him to see again. You won't see that maybe what we saw with maybe Owen Kelly maybe coming towards the end. You could see he was starting to slow down, at, especially at inter county level. At club level, he's still incredible, but at inter you could see signs of slippage. We won't get to see that with Parig. And I suppose we're, we're just going to remember the good bits of Parig when, when you're talking about him for years to come. Oh, and any particular standout games that you remember? Then also, in terms of club level, Teams, be, like he was so dominant at club level over the last, I suppose, guts of 15 years. The teams were nearly, a lot of their game plan was around how do we avoid party? Yeah, and like, I, I was thinking about it as well. Like, do you know, when you start this season again now without party, like, what, where will Turles rank this year? Like, do you know, they were in county final last year. Will they, will they drop down the pick into fourth or fifth now? Because, like, he's such, it's such a loss. He's such a gaping hole back there now. Like, do you know what I mean? And again, like no team can, can do it out of Paulie Mahar. Uh, yeah. It's, when, when, Paulie, when, when, when you have a guy in at six or three, whatever it is uh, in playing or wing back, like you just have to, you, you, you're of his stature, of his ability, because the one thing I suppose where he developed the game from a young fella up along was when he was getting the ball, we broke on oh nine and 10, that he was kind of getting the ball and launching. And I'd say him, Lachey had a good, good influence there that, that after four or five years there, he was three, four years. He was, he, when he was getting the ball, he was actually more, more, uh, finding the space and finding the player and he became way more intelligent. That comes with, with, with maturity as well. But, um, I like, but listen, um, club, like I just try to think there are matches. Like I, I'd say, it's nearly easier to think of matches he like he didn't play well in as guess really like as I say he he probably only played bad maybe two or three same as Zachy Halpine and, and Johnny Finn, but that's probably only the two games I can think of either like every other like he was outstanding in in most most games and like and like he held his own in the rest like he was never really cleaned up but remember a couple of occasions and like he was your he was your go-to man every single time and as I said you earlier there earlier like. He was he was one of the guys that was able to lift the team. That was that long range score from seven. I think he scored twenty points in in in, in the championship, mm. like um, from the half back claim, whatever it is. Like he was. There's very few players that can do that. There's very few players that have that that can bring that. Like I put I put it this way, Limerick are dominating hurling at the moment, right? 
and they don't have a player as influential as him in their backline, in my opinion. Right, and like, okay, Kyle, okay, Kyle Hayes, but we'll probably get there, right? Yeah. But like, over what he still has to put 13 years to get back to back to do that, right? Uh, can he do that? I mean, but he, he's just, he's just, I don't know, it's, it's one, it's one, I think he's a player in a lifetime, really, to be honest, yeah, and um. Uh, memories, so there's loads of memories. How's it to see? Like, there's loads of matches that you could go back to and say he was outstanding in. Do you know what I mean? But you could be, I'd say, as, as I said to you earlier, as off air, we could spend the day talking about him. Like, was there ever was, was there ever a better sight to see him going with that big right hand and coming down with a puck out? Like, it just, just, just a great sight. I remember, yeah. like, the simple thing, like, you go back to the 19 All Ireland final and that Niall O'Mara goal, like, it, it, he made that catch that set off that move uh, over the he went and yeah. On Walter Welch, I'm catching this one, like, and and he just the the whole game turned on that, like, for that catch, really. You know, the Niall had got the goal, but like, Paddy made that that play that got the whole thing going. Yeah, and even in 2016, the catch over Walter Walsh and the point yeah. with it, I think Kenny more or less yeah. gave up after that. Should have been hurler of the year in yeah. 2016. He yeah. had the split vote, and um, was an Austin Gleeson. Twice or three times. Yeah, twice. Twice or three times. Twice. Yeah. Yeah. He was on the, mm. on the game team of the year four times. Like he's. Like you know, he, I suppose the biggest compliment to give him is his his consistency. That's just no all star in three from, different from positions as well. View, yeah, and from a manager's point of view, I'd say, um, I'd say a dream to work with because the type of player that doesn't you know, you come across lads and I don't like playing fullback. Do you know, I want to mm. play six, I want to play seven. Do you know what I mean? Potty, I'd say wherever I don't mind. Mm. Potty does the job you done today on X player. You do the job. Yeah, no problem. I do it. Yeah. And I'd say he, as you say, he played what seventy one out of the seventy seven league games. I'd say, I'd say, he, I'd say, if a many managers came up to say, "Potty, I'm resting you," I'd say, he'd nearly growl at him. Like, it's he just, he yeah. just wants to play. Like, so he just, yeah. again, you you're looking at the matches last year, think, why, why is Potty playing in this one? I'd say he just, he just love hurling, yeah. and that, I'd say that's, that's just going to be the killing thing for Potty. Like, you could see Paddy hurling Junior B at 42 years of age for Turles Arsfield. Yeah. Like, but that, and he, I'd say he just, he just, the com, it's the competitor in him. Like, and I like, just, he just loves playing. Like, so, or yeah. he did love yeah. playing. Yeah. And I'm sure he'll have plenty of support around him because what a shock to the system it's going yeah. to be not being able to play. And so we know next year, obviously, there's not going to be Brendan Maher there. There's not going to be Paddy Maher there. And Nilo Maher is going to be away for the year. So we're going to talk about our own sort of tip 15s for the year in a little bit of time but Paul Tierney sent in a comment saying very few as committed as Parik was just thinking after his announcement what a coach you would make to, to go down that route so maybe that's something that will happen yeah. before time no doubt he wants to stay involved in the game the league is starting this weekend on uh, an away trip to Leash now we would have thought sure look we, Tipperary should be beating Leash most days out but after what happened against Kerry in the in the Munster co-op there a month ago I'm not. I'm not sure. Maybe Tip will have a stronger team out. Should do, but um, what what are your thoughts now after seeing a small bit of the the build up with Tip and Colin Bonner's first few months? Maybe maybe you haven't seen that much. What are your thoughts going into the league? Thoughts are we're going to have to have a lot of patience. I think um, first thing I think is the very supporters. That's one thing we don't have a, a, a abundance of is patience. There's a there's a there's a there's a rebuild going on here now and. Um, when you have the likes of Paddy and 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 Brendan Maher and uh, Willie Connors and uh, Niall O'Mara and I would say Brian O'Mara gone for the year, um, they're they're huge huge um, boots to fill in a, on, a, on a team and a panel. Um, I would say I would say listen I wouldn't read into the Kerry match at all, right? With COVID and everything forced out, I wouldn't read into that, that game at all. That can happen, you know, once we're training, they're going to train night before, you just don't know. Um, I know they've played Wexford since, I know they've played Cork since, I know they've played very well against Wexford, I know the Cork game was kind of a mixed bag, um, but all accounts, training is going very well, the atmosphere in the camp is very good. They're away last weekend in, in, um, in Carton House at a training camp, it's good, and things have gone, gone well. So I'm just looking forward to is okay. We spoke so much about party. Now it's time to move on and look look to the future. And um, I'm looking forward to like in the back maybe Craig Morgan from Killer One, Owen Connolly there from, from Cash and Brian McGrath who has after a super couple of years with the club. Like so, there's in the backs possibly. And I'm looking forward maybe to Paddy Cadell maybe establishing himself in the team. 
to look forward to the likes of Mark Hugh, Kier Brown is back in the fold, and uh, Connor Bowen. I know he's been injured there recently, but um, these guys, like these guys now, have, like Kier Brown was an under 21 player of the year, Connor Bowen, these guys show great at under 21 level. And people, supporters have been kind of asking, where have they been? Like, and why have they been introduced more over the last couple of years? And what's what's going on? Like, and are we, are we, was there a little bit of a failing there that we haven't introduced these guys earlier? And now we're in this situation that there is four or five players going to retire in within within a within a 12 24 month period and we haven't these boys but so listen Conor has a big big job ahead of him here now and the say the big thing here is that the Tipperary supporters we do need to understand that there's going to be a lot of young players and this leash game is not going to be simple this leash team is a, is a is, is an established leash team um that's well settled and all the rest so i this is not this is not going to be a cakewalk by any means I'd imagine. So, um, and this this league campaign, I feel it's going to be a, a quite a difficult one. But I'm not worried about the league. All I want to see is players be blooded, um, and 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 give them a proper chance. Like if they if they get if things go wrong for letting the first half an hour of a game right and they take it off, but don't just regard it. Like persist to them because like I said, just like it it could a lad might develop this year, it could be the year next year, it could be the year after. So, um. As, as Shane, I, I, it's, it's it's going to be a very interesting league, um, and I, as I said, just, we just need to get behind this Tip team now as Tipperary people and and drive and and support them and like like um, they're still great hunting, you know. Yeah, I'm looking at the the Division One Group A and Group B. So Division One Group A is Clare, Cork, Galway, Limerick, Offaly, Wexford, very strong side. Group B, which we're in, is Antrim, Dublin, Kilkenny, Leash, and Waterford. Now, there's a mixture of teams there that you'd expect to beat and a couple of teams that you'd expect to have very tough days out against. But I think there's a fair chance of making a league semi-final coming through that. Now, would that be a good thing, Shane, or a bad thing? And to be honest, if you didn't get to a league semi-final, would that be a bit of a disappointment? Now, I watched Dublin against Wexford last weekend, and Dublin are moving very well. They have a strong team out. They're looking more and more settled all the time. And they're doing a little bit of what Limerick do, which is they're moving that ball through the hands until somebody is running clear on their own and knocking a handy point over from the 45. It's just that bit of patience which leads to, to easy scores. So they've maybe developed their game plan a bit more. So what, what are your thoughts as a league semi-final? What tip wants want from this? Uh, is it me or Owen? Oh, sorry, Shane, for you. Yeah. Um... I'd say I'd say the league uh, league semi final probably be the, the limit I, I, of their tar, of their targets. I like I think a league final is down for two weeks before tip play Waterford. I think that's too close. I think if you got to a league semi final and you left it at that, grand. If we don't get to a league semi final, I wouldn't be too perturbed. I think that's what we were, what Colin Bonner said yesterday is that when when he gets the end of the league, whether it's after five matches, six or seven, I think we sort of need to know. 13 14 of what the championship team will look like and look I, i'd agree with owen i think that this could be it could be a difficult league um like it's not that i suppose of the easiest of it it's it's the easier of the two divisions on paper like so you're probably looking at look leash is a winnable game i don't think kenny will be without the valley hail contingent um look dublin are going to be strong um antrim is probably a winnable game at the back end and who else is there it's um I'm forgetting somebody there. Well, uh, yeah, so and, Antrim, Dub, yeah, uh, Kilkenny, Leash, and Water. Yeah, like so. Like I would think, if Tipperary in the league, three or four with three or four wins, and the, if it's not enough to make the knockout stages, I don't think you'd be losing any sleep over. I think, I think for a lot of Tipperary supporters, is is it's about we need to find three, four new guys that are going to be in the team, starting team for the championship. I think that's that's. Um, like I, I think that's what we need to find. I think we need, I think we need like Craig Morgan, Brian McGrath, Owen Connolly. How are these guys going to go? Paddy Cadell, is he going to build off his campaign last year? Mark Keogh showed signs last year. I think I think Jake Morris really needs to kick on another bit now. Like he 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 does can contribute goal points or two here. I'd I'd love to see Jake take over a match now at this stage of his career and like um really develop take take this game to another level. Um. That, that those sort of players like are, are we going to like Jason Ford had an incredible year last year. I'd love to see him being given this, that number eleven jersey. It's okay, do Jason do what you did against Waterford and Limerick in those two games. You're more or less given the role to go where you want. Get and further guys to find him. And look, he he's he could be easily hit four, five, six point from play as he did in those two games. And I think 
Full forward is an interesting one for me. Um, I, I, I don't know if Shamey is a 70-minute man anymore, whether do you start him? And I, I think he, maybe at this stage of his career, would he be more impactful coming off the bench 15, 20 minutes into the second half? Do you go with Mark Keogh at full? Do you go with John McGrath at full? I, I'd love to see maybe John McGrath getting a lot of games in this league and just building on that momentum from his club campaign. Because, you know, he, he hasn't... He hasn't been at his best for tip the last two years, and maybe saying to John, "Look, you're you're our go-to full forward, maybe for these late league games and building on that progression he had or that good form he had at a club level last year." Oh, and it's all well and good saying, you know, just get through the league and find a few players, but like, do you think there is pressure to get results anyway? Because like the pressure does come on if you start to have a bit of, you know, ropey form, and then you're going into Munster not knowing fully where you're at, and all of a sudden. You're playing all the strong teams. I mean, Munster is stronger than Leinster, no doubt about it. So is there a sort of pressure to not only develop players, but develop a style of play and also win games? Not to me, yeah? Yeah. That's you, on, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, there is, there is pressure on, sorry, Shane. Yeah, there is, of course there is. And, and as I said, there's expectation to Ferrari to win. Like, and, and I said, that's what I was saying, Jeff Law said, is that we're going to have to have patience, but... Like, you know, people are going to expect us to be, to be leash and, you know, and, and we have Kilkenny at home and they're going to expect us to be Kilkenny at home as well. Like, and, um, you know, and they'll be out to Bally Hale crew probably as well. Like, but I'd say, but um, uh, there is going to be pressure on and, and uh, I don't know, it's, it's, um, it's going to be it's going to be a tricky one for the, for the, for the management team as such as because like they're going to want to try and win games or be competitive as possible but also want to want to want to blood lads so that's where the conundrum is going to be and like um and like the championship we're sort of in the doldrums at the moment aren't we we sort of really don't really know where we stand like no. tip could end up having a brilliant league like and we're and it's like it's a yeah. new management like we're sort of we're sort of in limbo a small bit at the moment isn't that I, fair to I say to carry i think carry defeat really <laughs> put the cat among pigeons and kind of yeah. really upset the apple tart and it was kind of the worst possible start you want that that the, the management um that anybody wanted to, to start so I, obviously listen i said i don't really read that game at all right um but I suppose now we're kind of at looking at it going, God, and again, Paulie retiring, Brendan Maher retiring, like it's all nearly like doom and gloom and all the rest. And I suppose the players need to, need to, a uh, management need to remove themselves from that. And like I said, was, we like, we have won a couple of iron titles. Like we have a lot of players that need to be put in there. And like the other side of this is you can't be you and, we don't know what's going to happen in this league. You don't like there, there could be three. Like we could we could be talking here in six weeks' time and saying after having a super league and after finding the next Y and Z and this fella's after hard always you know, We now have a we now have a three. Or we now have a new six or we now have a new eleven or whatever. And like we could be, but I I, I honestly think that's the we need to look look at it from a, from a positive point of view rather than a negative and and um, and because the set is. These are the players we have, and like, as it, like, there's another player there that okay, we talk about doing with Loom that I'm disappointed. The two players I'm disappointed are not going to be involved this year in in in, in the in, in the in the championship or league is Kieran Connolly and Brian O'Meara. Like, I like Kieran Connolly to me was a standout player in the championship and club, and I was really looking forward to him. Um, I, I understand that the two the two of them going traveling together seemingly. So now listen, pretty going for a year maybe, but but like the, again, like that's. They're massive losses as well. Like, do you know what I mean? And yeah, Brian O'Mara uh, seems is like lighting it up in the Fitzgibbon Cup. Like I heard it was yeah, one game two weeks ago. He was he was the best yeah. player in the field. The best player in the field, and like, he's ever turned himself into kind of a physically a specimen, like as well. Like, a, mm. and, and he'll be a, an exact direct replacement for Paul. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So, like, these are all things that we have to understand. Like, these boys don't. These boys are, aren't growing trees. Like, don't pick these guys mm. every day. So now. Now you just have to listen. As I said, you is the the good news for me is that is that training is going well and the form in the camp is good and that's important. And like it, they're after getting a lot of shots in the arm. So um, it, this this league this league is is going to be very very important. But as I said, you is I would definitely say it's going to be a breeding ground, right? And let's. If we can get three or four players, find three or four players, and establish three or four players for championship out of this, uh, championship out of this league, brilliant, right? And the such is, yeah, league semi final, get the league semi final, brilliant. But as, you're, as Shane was rightly saying, you're only two weeks out from final to the first round of the championship. 
like if these lads were left alone for five or six weeks uh, before previous championship, it would, mightn't be a bad thing. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And let them get to keep away from the media, keep away from everything, just do their own thing, grow and get to, as you were saying there, Shane, they're going to have to decide on a style of play that suits this team, right? Um, and they're going to have to decide if, is she, is um, Shamey going to start at 14 and be a four, and, and are, are we going to put a couple of live lads around him or are we going to go with a, with a two inside maybe or go shake up a bit different or I mean so what suits this group now because the, the dynamic has changed from 12 months ago this, this is a different tip, tip, tip very team now so with different personnel so it's going to be very interesting time will tell mm. yeah absolutely and also it's a, it's a new management team as well and we're not entirely sure what sort of system tip will play so we're going to bring up our um, our our sort of 15s for the year this is just what myself and Shane are sort of guessing what might be the 15 or maybe you know a bit of personal preference in there too things might change massively after you watch the league so what we'll do is on we'll bring up our teams we'll talk through them and then uh, you can sort of pick them apart and tell us what sort of apes we are yeah, but, uh, I'll, I'll just bring it up first <laughs> and I'll talk through my one Shane then you talk through yours and then Owen just jump straight in on the back of that so my team on the right there I've Brian Hogan in goals tough pick between him and Barry Hogan I have a full back line of Cahill Barrett, Ronan Maher and Seamus Kendi. I'm thinking Kendi would follow probably the guy who's uh, who's going to roam a little bit. But then again, you can kind of move him around for different matchups as you like. I think Brian McGrath, Paddy Cadell and Barry Heffernan is sort of a half back line. You wouldn't like to go long on top of. They're very uh, clever with the ball. I, I really like that half back line. Midfield, look, I think you're going to have end up having two men inside. You're probably going to fairly flood the midfield. But Alan Flynn... I think he's been good the last years. Dan McCormick, we know what he can do in midfield. And then Michael Breen and probably Mark Kyo as the two wing forwards there, probably dropping a little bit deeper, just being absolute workhorses. Then I've John McGrath centre forward, and I'd have Jason Ford out kind of with him as a second centre forward, kind of doing what you're saying, Shane. And then Seamus Callan and Jake Morris inside. So within that, I mean, like that's two great tar- target men with pace inside. And Callan, maybe he's not the 70 minute man anymore, but I still think he's a 50, 55 minute man. Uh, so that's my team. I haven't named the likes of Jared Brown there. We'll have to see how he goes during the league. Noel McGrath, I'm thinking he can come on and do serious damage. Uh, the likes of Connor Boa and uh, Bonner Maher, to say. Shane, your your thoughts on your own team? Yeah, so it's like I've gone club loyalty and goals with, with Brian Hogan. I say, um, like it's a, I think it's a toss up with him and, and Barry. There's very, very little between them. Like, I would have known Barry since he was a knee high to a grasshopper. Like, so it was, uh, be a tough one. Like, Barrett picks himself outstanding player I went for Owen Connolly at fullback I said look James Quigley's probably the out and out corner at fullback on the squad you could say throw in John Marrow I think thinking Owen Connolly has the sort of physical tools that a young Potty Marrow had 12 or 13 years ago and I think if maybe Potty moves out maybe maybe Connolly could be the the, the white the, the young white hope for the future throw him in there in these couple of games, see can he can he he has a look he's he's a chip off the old block. TJ Connolly is the most impressive chap you could meet in terms of cash. Very grounded. I think Owen has all the I think he has all the tools to be a great one. Craig Morgan, look, I think he, he's been there three years now. Like he's a he's another Cahill Barrett type of a player. I think he's a, a I would say an NFL a shutdown corner. Like and he can put he can if he was a free man in the half corner in cornerback he confidently carry the ball into the half back line through midfield. Um half back line, I think Brian McGrath has to be given a shot and I play him at seven like he did with the club cutting in from from wing, maybe cut from out to in. I think I'd put him there. I'd have Ronan at six, just a fulcrum of the team at centre back. I don't think he was I didn't find him I didn't think he was as comfortable at full back last year as I was hoping he would be. So I think with Paddy gone look having a big leader at that at six and like where most of the play is going to be and have him in have him in there. Um I said it before, I had a, it was a toss between Seamus Kennedy and Barry Heffernan for five. I just went for she- Kennedy's physicality, but look, if it went for Barry Heffernan, I couldn't say boo against it. Midfield, I, I've Paddy Cadell named a midfield, but I I think Tip need to maybe look at playing four and a half back line and I'd have maybe if if you were going the sweeper route, maybe Cadell, um, because he's a very, very good reader of the game and he's able to break tackles. Um, Alan Flynn, look, he's been so consistent. Like I think he, he a not heralded worker, maybe the likes of Darrow Donovan does for Limerick is so important. Um, half forward line, Dan McCormick and Breen, sort of, I'd say, doing what they did last year, drifting back, sort of 
up and down the, those wing back wing forward midfield positions for the center forward for me last year was a revelation i think i have him go there again if you were sending breen and dan mccormick maybe back as a third midfielder i'd i'd be interested to see how jake morris goes out in the wing maybe and then have Jay, John McGrath and Mark Kyo maybe as your two men full forward line. If you weren't going Callanan, you need somebody who has an eye for goal. And that's why I'd like, I think it's a big year for Mark Kyo, maybe as a more of a an inside forward because he likes to put the head down. And, and he's if he's had, well, if there's 40% of a chance for goal, um, he's going to go for it. And like, that leaves, like you have a bench then of maybe Noel Bonner, Callanan, John O'Dwyer, Barry Heffernan. Joe Brown, like I think it's not a it's still a very, very strong squad when you get when you look at it. Look it can be completely wrong, but I just I I do think we need to be looking at it, the way things are going. Like you need you need finishers as well. And I'd like I like my personally I like my experienced guys to be coming off the bench or maybe rather than psychologically taking them off for ten or fifteen minutes to go. So so, Owen, what do you think? Are, are we completely off the off the reservation altogether? I don't know. I'm not going to. I'm not going to <laughs> go too, too much against you now, but I definitely got to go against you with the first one, right? Yeah. The goalie. <laughs> Barry Hogan to me is yeah. the goalie. Yeah. Barry Hogan to yeah. me is the goalie. Um, I think he's very comfortable. Um, short or long, I think the way the game is on, he's. Um, listen, Brian Hogan's a super goalie, right? And he pro- he's proven that. But I think Barry is more comfortable on the from 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 yeah. to 60 yards out of the puck out. And the way the game has gone, you have to be because, like, if you played like Limerick, they're going to so sit right back and they're going to want you to poke that ball along. And you have to be able to camouflage it and in the last second give a pass there to your six, seven, or eight at pace. And I think that's, I think that's where he wins out purely on that, right? Shot stop and all the rest. There's nothing between them. Um, I would go with Barrett. Yeah. I'd actually go with Seamus Kennedy at fullback, right? Um, and I'd go with Craig Morgan on the other side of him, right? Uh, I think Seamus could do. He has that bit of a football and style volume, and he could be a, yeah. a, a mauler in square there and a bit of a stopper. I, I'd, I'd, I'd worry about Ronan's pace in the fullback line. That teams my, I, my. Might pinpoint him and drag him around the place, like and uh, likes to land that, like. And uh, I think Jamie Kennedy will be able to deal with that no problem. Uh, um, Barry Heffern in the wing, Rona Maher at six, and probably Paddy Cadell at the under wing, um, and kind of have that go forward attacking players. Uh, Barry, Paddy that can shoot from long distance, Rona can score from long distance. Like you look at the top scorers now uh, in the championship leagues, like mm. Dermot Burns, um, uh, Kyle Hayes, these boys for wing. Backs are your your are your shooters, and you have to have these boys that are comfortable on the ball, take a ball, put it over the bear. Um, Brian McGrath has been close enough in that and around there. Again, we're all question Brian foot. I I I think we're, we're able to kind of harden him. Like he, he'll be he'll be knocking that door there hard as well. Like so again. But again, he's um, his brain. His brain. His hurling brain would get him out of uh, having that lack of yeah. pace. Like it just he, yeah. he he's just so cute, and I I did think. Is Barry Heffern in a midfield something that should be looked at? Just he's an eye for a score, and he's a I, I always and he's a big tall guy. I just he, you can he, do that at wing back. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, it's it's it's, yeah, it's, but wing back, it's yeah, I think a wing yeah. back. I think if you're looking down the field as an opposition goalkeeper, and you see you see Barry Heffern and Ronan and Kell, yeah. three guys that are confident in the air. Like, do you yeah. know what I mean? That you're yeah, more you're not you're not you're, you won't be as inclined you won't be as inclined to hit, hit a ball down top of him. And yeah. I, I do think that he's a type of player. Should have the license to go forward. Yeah. That when the ball goes up into the forward line, that he can come up mm. and the ball could be uh, recycled back to him, and he's popped over the bar. Like he's a he's a really good hurler. So is, so is Cadell, mm. you know, and so is Ron. Obviously, uh, midfield I go Dan Alan Flynn, right? Uh, I'd have Noel McGrath then to come on to middle of the field, um, to either for Dan or Alan, right? Uh, as fresh legs, um, and have forward and I go Jake, uh, Jason Ford and Breen. Right. Uh, I think Jake and Breen will give you the work and the the work rate up and down the wings to get back to the wing back to the half back line play ball again. Um, Jake is a very good distributor of the ball um, mm. into the forward line, so um, I think he'd be smart with, on on uh, in possession. Breen would have to do that's where he have to work. Breen is more of a uh, get the ball and go forward, run the teams, create space, and give it off, or, and, and 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 shoot or whatever. Um, inside line. 
this is the tricky one now because after throwing his on me so in 30 seconds I'd pick an inside mm. forward line so uh, I, I, I have John McGrath Jared Brown and Jamie see this is the thing like you need to like John McGrath Jamie right aren't blessed with pace anymore right or mm. John McGrath seems to never have pace but then seems to be able to get away from everybody so he's kind of this he's he's um He's 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 caught us all, but I think we do need to inject a Q, uh, Jared Brown, um, and one of the others, and I think we need to change it up. I think I would personally go maybe even one inside, uh, a likes of a Jared Brown, or a, or I play one inside with Jared Brown, and I play Shamey and John McGrath off him on the kind of on the edge of the D, and let him do the Galan job left and right, left and right, pulling legs around, uh, rather than having Shamey making Boston runs out the sideline to win a ball and mm. then he were taking him away from the scoring chance, right? I'd have him on the second ball. I'd have him that when Jared Brown gets the ball, that Shamey's in the middle and he's given a diagonal pass out or he's given a pass that you're putting Shamey on the end of the ball rather than expecting him to win the primary possession. Um, uh, and the same with John McGrath. Like you want your finishers in finishing positions. So you need to runners like the Q, like the Gerald Brown, who can win possession. And then so listen, that's my my tip on it. It could be going off the ball as well. Can I ask you one? So are you nearly looking at Gerald Brown there to play the the way that Ong, or sorry, the way Tony Kelly did against Waterford last year, where he's playing close to goal and his pace is a threat, like he can turn and throw it over the bar, but like you're saying, someone come on the end of it too. Yeah, I'm saying Ger Brown, Connor Bow, um, I'm saying Mark Yo, I don't know who it is, right? Um but I do think we the day of playing Shane through forward and expecting him to run left and right in space is a non runner because he's he he's, he's it's he doesn't have the pace to get there. And when he gets the ball then he's not able to get away from the mm. the close tension. So my hundred percent my I, my feeling is that Every like if we were, if we listen, Limerick are the are the trendsetters here, right? So what they're doing is they're putting Galen inside, right? And the motor, they're leaving him in there, and then they're swapping in like Graham with Cahy or Seamus Flanagan. They're putting two, and they're swapping them, and then whoever whoever is Flanagan's inside with Galen, what they're doing is they're bringing the third person out the field, into the half forward, yeah. into the midfield, and then they they have they're they're just leaving space for two by the side who have the pedals to get out there and turn and shoot. But they're very comfortable then with Tom Morris coming through the middle, Garol coming through the middle, and the Keen Keen coming through the middle, recycling back out to them, they get how many easy scores you see Limerick getting from that. Mm. Right? So we need to if we want to beat Limerick, I think we have to kind of mimic it. So we need to find a system that suits Tipperary and personnel that suits this that go right. We have to have pace inside. Like Dan Morrissey and these that can be got at. Sean Finn can be got at if you have pe- if you have pace, right? But you won't get him with Jamie. But Jamie on the come in from a, a central position in a kind of a in playing behind Jason Ford or playing like like that position. That if we have a really lively lively inside forward that can win possession, turn Jamie to run and he can pin him with all. Then the defence is under pressure. Then you're asking question of defence, and we have Noel McGrath can play that could play that role lovely as well really clever in get into into right positions like do you know I mean Tipperary have really good stick men but it's just to get the right the right um court uh combination of front it was is the trick and that's that's going to take a bit of time mm. yeah Shane as Owen goes through that like that actually does sound like a very promising um approach to it like as we're talking through this and seeing all the options that Tip do have and we haven't even mentioned John Bubbles O'Dwyer who may be back from that knee injury mm. Would it sort of give you a bit more optimism that maybe the gap isn't quite as uh, I, as far? I, I think I think that that's the case. I think it's it's as I said a few minutes ago. Like we're sort of we're sort of in that in a bit of a fog. We sort of don't really know what the management are thinking. I so we'll get a few glimpses out over the next couple of weeks in terms of what they might be thinking. I do think I could. I think a three-man full forward line. I just think I just I don't think we can afford to do that. I think the way Hurland has gone, you need to have that extra body around the middle, and maybe that's where Joe Brown could be given a bit of a license out there too. Like I think, look, I just think I, I haven't included Joe at the moment because I just think he has ground to make up. I suppose he was he started an All Ireland quarter final in 2019, but really hasn't kicked on from there. Like so, look, he he needs games. He needs to to bed back in. I suppose. He needs to see other people. I just thought in that Kerry game where he was, 
he was shooting on sight really and in, into a strong wind i think that that needs to be taken out of his game he's got to see other people like look and he, look he has that extra pace like he has that turn of foot which we which we badly need um like i think it's a big year for kyo i, I look like that that goal that's a put putting the head down and trying to go for a goal and like I did mention to, to Shane earlier, like a, a couple of bolters, maybe guys that maybe are on the periphery that could push it away. And I think Connor Bow is one. I think the year with the footballers could have he, he like if he gets the hurling up to speed, I think he'll be fine. Like I think that he, he will have done a lot of that physicality and that physical work, and he's an eye for a score. And like one player, I think he could be he could be one that Bonner would like is Robert Byrne. Um, he's just a bit of a tough nut. He's he, he there's a there's an arrogant streak and he, he's confident in his own ability. I know he he can have good against Kerry, wasn't he? he can, yeah, he can have disciplinary issues between club and can. He, he got sent off against Westmead last year, but there's there's a there's a ruggedness in him that I just think Bonner could like him. Like, and I suppose it was always trying to maybe cut um Liam Sheedy that why is is well it was Robert there because of his maybe club loyalty, but look, he's still there under new management. So like there's obviously they, they saw something in the Miller Shield and in the, the Kerry game to say, okay, is there something? I, I, I do think there's something in Robert Byrne that uh, good that Colin Bonner might would would attract Colin Bonner to him. Yeah, we're we're all kind of I suppose searching in the dark at the moment because we don't know what the team's going to be like. We don't know who's going to be picked, who's going to be injured. On like, what do you think? Are we building towards twenty twenty three realistically here, or can Tip make a serious impact this year? Oh, you know, that's um, like come here. We were we were back in thousand sixteen with um, yeah, Michael Ring came in and he was struggling to find selectors. We had much hope that rider. We end up in a learned title, like so. Like you just don't know, and like it's, I um, there's still, there's still the one thing we have to remember with these young guys as well is that these lads have won, and mm. they have won at underage, which is a big, big help, right? They've beaten the Corks and they've beaten the, the, the Kennys and all this, and so there, there's no fear in these lads, and um, there's like you don't win a couple of Ireland titles and and not have not have a, a, the quality around the place, so it's. If it all looks so grim at the moment because you have such big household names gone, right? But to me, that is the excitement of it. And from a management point of view, they, and, it, and from a county point of view, we should be excited by who is going to come in, who who is the next man, who is the next Paddy Mar, who is the next Brendan Mar. Like, is it going to be Paddy Kell? Is it going to be Dylan Kirk? Is it going to be Joe Brown? Who's going to put their hand up? Because they're they're going to get opportunities. They're really good stickmen, but I do think the management um, have, will have a you say in the style of play, and they're going to have to be kind of plucky here now, a brave and kind of say, right, listen, uh, going with that three man inside is not going to work, right? Going with the likes of Shamey at fourteen and putting two lads inside him, that's we're going to get eight up, right? And we just do do not have pace for that. So it's it. Of course, we can. If we can find two or three players, right? Of course, we can have a great, a great uh, championship campaign, right? Hundred percent, because we have the players to do it. We have the, we have the, we have the skill level to do it. Yeah. Oh, just on, oh, well, have you there? Um, I know it did intrigue me why why Tommy Dunn went back, and I said, I'm thinking to myself, it, is Tommy getting? Will Tommy have a bigger say on how Tipperary play now than he did for the last three years? That 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 I I did think. Did did Tommy feel? I have no indication to say maybe like you had Eamon O'Shea, you had Dara Egan, you had Liam, you had Tommy. Maybe they 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 balanced out the workload, but that Tommy said, "Okay, I, I'm staying on. I'm going in my column." Does that suggest to you that Tommy will have a, a greater say in how? Training goes, tactics from goes on will be for under with Colin Bonner. I don't know. I listen. I don't know. I wasn't involved in the camps, and well, yeah. Any time I've spoken to Tommy about say uh, the the previous like regime, whatever. Like he was never. There was never yeah. no negative, negative or. Oh no! I was never saying that. No, I just. The, no. Yeah. But but that that. I know what you're saying. Like, he he would have he would more involved in coaching. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. From the outside of me looking in, like yourself looking in, you'd be kind of saying, "Is Tommy now the head coach? Is that is what you're saying?" Whereas, yeah. as it was, was was even O'Shea the head coach with Liam Sheehy and Dara Egan, and and was Tommy, yeah. um, 
a kind of a um, a forwards coach or a goalkeeping coach or yeah. a park coach. From the outside looking in, yes, I would say, uh, like, I would say, but I I think though Tommy was doing a lot more coaching last year with Tip, yeah, than he did in the previous couple of years as well. Though I think he was getting more and more. I think was he was he I think he was doing a lot more uh, mm. last. year. You know, I could be stand to be corrected on that, but listen, the way Tommy Dunn is just he loves Tipperary, right? He loves it, it like it's it's he, mm. if Tommy gets the call, he'll do it, right? It's because um, he wants Tipperary, he wants the best for Tipperary, simple as that. There's nothing, there's, no, there's nothing selfish writing about that about, about about Tommy, like he wants he he got so much out of it. the way he would look at it, he got so much out of it from a, a, a personal point of view from Tipperary. Um, that he want to give back, and he's he, he's he's happy to give back. He loves working with um, quality players. He loves challenging himself. So, um, but again, the biggest test for Tommy, in my opinion, is he's Tommy to me is excellent coach. He gets mm. the very most out of any player, right? And he'll he'll drive them. He'll from a from a training point of view, from a training session point of view, he'll he'll get the very very much. Mm. So we've lost the sound. Something. I think we've lost the sound there, Owen. I think we can. Okay. Well, Owen, look, we'll uh, thank you very much for joining us there, and sure, look, I think we got the gist of it there, yeah. and uh, yeah, appreciate you joining us there. Okay, that just seems to have dropped yeah. there. So just uh, just to, to to finish off that point mm. there, and the optimism is there for this year. Ah, sure, look, we'll we'll know more after a few weeks. As I say, as um, as, as one said, twenty sixteen. I don't think too many at the start of the year thought with Tip of winning All Ireland with the data and same. Look, we've seen first year managers Liam Sheedy in twenty nineteen back in. I know he technically was his second term, but he was back in and won it. So look, you can't rule it out. Um, look, it's it's how would you say? I it's how would you say? Um, we're supposed we're, we're we don't know where we stand at the moment, but then there's huge there's a bit of excitement there to what what could the potential of what could happen. Like if we've named a lot lot of players there, that very very good players. Where if this thing clicks and being a bit a bit of youthful enthusiasm and a bit of energy into the team, like we could be um, we could have a very very interesting year. Yeah, very much so. What about the Tipperary footballers? Ten ten points apiece draw with Watford at the weekend. Yeah. Probably not. Uh, the just way. before we before we go to the footballers. Um, who are you? What do you put your league overall? Like, do you, what do you think? It's, it's probably you think it's probably Limerick are in a strong position to with the panel there to 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 to, to do it again. Like, so. Um, well, I, I do think that Limerick are the the definite favourite. Yeah. Like, even if you look at their side of the league, which is the toughest: Clare, Cork, Galway, Offaly, Wexford. The way they canter through the through mm. the um the monster co-op and all that they do look like they're in root health even mm. when they were missing a load of players and only had barry nash start from last yeah. year's game they still battered kerry and we lost to kerry so you'd have to look at that and think they're ready to roll on again their game mm. plan is already sorted you know Tipperary just trying to develop that from scratch now so i think it's going to be limerick and um yeah i mean i think the main thing for tip assuming tip come up against limerick and i think it's good if tip gets to it and just get whatever new players are coming in mm. used to the fact, used to coming up against them, and what it will take, and can we find someone who who's able to mark Keen Lynch, for example, mm. and just road test that sort of stuff. So I, I think it'll be Limerick, and to be honest, Galway, they're missing an awful lot of players at the moment, like a lot of teams, mm. but I saw them in the Walsh Cup a couple of weeks ago. They looked a bit ropey. Cork, what have they learned from that All-Ireland mm. final defeat last year? Will Mark Keane make a big impression there? Some I think there could ways. be a league dark horse, but they're not playing in the first round in Munster, so they could probably go all out to get to a league final because they'll have they'll have a three week gap to their first game in Munster, like so. You yeah. think... who, who do you think is most likely to to not make that top five, or top three in Munster? Um, at the moment, I I think I, I did a sort of at the moment I would say Tip and Cork. Are most I likely to not. I yeah. Even even like traditionally, but, yeah. Yeah, well. I just it's like the tip tip tips two home games on paper are clear and cork. Win, winnable games. So like you're then you're trying to pick up a win on the road, which is Limerick and Watford, who are I are, are the two best teams in Munster at the moment, like so. Um 
that's the way I'd be looking at it. So like it's it's that's not to say Tip couldn't go down to Walsh Park on Easter Sunday, the first game, and pick up two points. Like so, it's um that's why that 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 match against Waterford on the sixth of March in the league is probably from Tip's point of view, I think is the is the biggest game of, of the five. Like so, in terms of it's like it's what it's it's the only game match we're going to play if somebody will be playing the championship. Like so, mm-hmm. it is um it's that, definitely going to be the fire and brimstone game of the Monster Championship. Mm. You know, of all of the games, yeah. tip that's one that Tipperary will not want to lose. Yeah. But like, I think, I think, I think Limerick for the league. I, I, I think Clare will be a dark horse from that side. I think Dublin, a dark horse from one B. But like, I did, like I'd be. Man, many times have we seen in the Walsh Cup and Munster League teams coming into the league and they fall very flat in the first day. And I, I would have said Dublin. I, I'm, I'm not going to go near Dublin against Water this weekend because I, I've just seen it too many times pre-season winners and they come out flat in the first round of the league and you can sure Liam Cahill will be sizing Waterford up like they're Waterford very quiet this winter like so I think you could have Waterford coming out with a big game at the weekend so um, I think Limerick Dublin Limerick Dublin clear the winner will come for one of those three in the league yeah I mean Dublin are in Parnell Park and they're yeah. in flying form at the moment um, and I wouldn't be surprised if maybe Wexford last weekend had one eye on Limerick next this this Sunday. Maybe they didn't put everything out. That, they have a that, lot of injuries, Shane. Yeah. Like Kevin Foley came off early. There's no leech in there at the moment. He doesn't yeah. expect to have Rory O'Connor back either. Um, there's a couple of more players, Shane Reck. Mm. Uh, one, Sean Murphy isn't there at the moment. I think I think Wexford could take a bit of a paddling from Limerick next week. I think Dublin might beat Watford. just depends on what team yeah. Watford have out. And then Clare. I, I think Clare... I think Clare will struggle to get out of Munster this year because Aidan McCarthy's out for the year. Mm. Um, Tony Kelly, who knows if he'll be coming back in flying form. I think Peter Duggan might have an injury at the moment. So, so, so the, the thing about Clare is that there, there's a stubborn streak in them. Like I, I like that about them. And then it, it, it comes from their manager too. Like they, like, it's a matter what players they're missing. Like I know they'll have Peter Duggan back. I just think... There's a stubborn streak in them that'll make them very, very hard to beat at the moment, like so. Yeah, and uh, get your comments in and let us know what you think uh, ahead of the new season and the league that's starting this weekend. The Tipperary footballers down in Division 4, obviously we know there's plenty of players that aren't involved this year, but uh, a 10 points uh, a piece draw with Waterford, probably not the start that David Power wanted. No, I was down there on Sunday and um, look, they, they were they were lucky to get out of it with a draw. I know Waterford got the equaliser, but like the Waterford owned the ball for most, most of that second half and Tip were sort of living off scraps really. And um, look, I says the, probably the worst time to play Waterford is probably is the first round, and then you have to go down there to Dungarvan. And like it's the start of every year. You're always there's always hope springs eternal, and like Waterford never. Never fear tip. And I guess actually the fourth time in a row tip have failed to beat Watford in the league. I guess two default going back to the OAS, like two two draws and um two defeats and like three of those games would have been in division four. Like so it just shows you like it they're these monster derbies, they're difficult. And like look, Tip are missing so many players, like the the ones that have um not there for, for other reasons. Like if Stephen O'Brien is injured, Jack Kennedy is injured, Jimmy Feehan had to cry off before the game. So like and you were playing with six Six debutants, so like that's that's not easy. And like you're, we're playing, we're not we're not playing from the the strongest pick we had over the years either. And like it, it, there, there is a, a bit an element of rebuilding has to go on. And look, it was uh, I suppose a point is better than nothing really. But I suppose it does mean that the the game against Leitrim this Sunday and in Simple Stadium is nearly must win. And look, that's going to be difficult too because like I don't think there's going to be too many um, new faces back for the weekend. But look. Um, look, it's it's on Simple Stadium. They know that patch. Um, the, the firmer pitch should, should suit Tipperary better. That it is a very sticky pitch down in Dungarvan. I like, can um, you, you you see Tipper did look like they were still struggling to cover the ground a small bit, where maybe they wanted to put a bit of pace on the ball, and that was probably a disappointing thing for me. And that but when Tipperary struggled, maybe when in possession, like the their their a far is out of defence into attack or a bit labelled or that maybe there needs to be a bit more injection of pace put onto the carrying the ball. Look at what look I was looking at what Kerry were doing against Kildare last weekend. Like they're when lads were at running at their opposition tackler they were really going at top speed. I thought maybe tip tip guys are the sort of not sure whether they should be going hard enough or maybe they need to turn back or something like that. But look 
I think it was always going to be a difficult campaign for Tipperary. Um, I, I don't think we need to be. We're down in Tipperary. We're down in Division Four for a reason because we're not good enough to be in Division Three, and we can't be throwing our nose up and saying we should be beating Watford. We're down in Division Four because that's where we are at the moment. Yeah, and then what about the the Tip Camogie team? I mean, the seniors are starting this weekend against uh, Down in the Rag. Juniors are against Kilkenny, and then the minors are against Limerick. Yeah, busy busy start for them now this uh, this weekend. I suppose the seniors up against Down. I was a game that they will be expected to win. Um, could be a difficult league campaign. Like it'd be interesting to see how whether the drum and inch contingent to I suppose that there's a good good chunk of that. Um, you have Eva McGrath, Maria Deviston, they give Eva McGrath. You have a good chunk of that squad to be uh, as part of the Tipperary team. I assume they'll be given a few weeks off to to refresh the batteries after um after the uh, after the club campaign. But maybe that's no bad thing either. And I suppose on paper, Tipperary's toughest league game in the group is against Galway, and that's not till. Not, that's not for another four or five weeks. So, like, they could probably afford maybe to leave the drum and inch contingent out, maybe win against the likes of Down and, and Offaly and hopefully be at their strongest for that Galway game, which on paper looks like a league a league final league final playoff because only the group winner goes to the final. Like, I know, I think Tip would love to get to a league final because I suppose getting getting to a national final is huge for this team. Just to say, to break through that glass ceiling because, like, the last two semi-finals last year against Kilkenny in the league, a game they had well in hand only for a late late collapse. And in that Galway semi-final was very, very winnable too. Like you think the the the, the goalkeeping mistake that that there would what, what was only a four point game. That goalkeeper's mistake was a one point game. Tip had a couple of goal chances and they were pushing on at the end. So like they're not that far away. I just think they getting to a league final would be huge for this group of girls. And um but like I you would think in terms of the squad, they probably should be strong enough to beat down this year without um this Sunday without or sorry, the Saturday without the, the drum and inch contingent. Mm, absolutely. And best to look to them in those games over the weekend. Uh, don't forget the Nina Guardian paper is out, so pick up a copy of that. Loads of coverage of the likes of Party mm. Matters retirement and plenty of other stuff. Thanks very much, Shane. We'll be doing it again next week. Talk to you then. Welcome to Tipcast by the Nina Guardian.